Hi everybody, it's great to be back in Asheville. My name is Judy Knight and um, I, I think Asheville is near and dear to my heart because I'm the organizer of WordCamp Atlanta and um, <laughs> along with a trustee committee that I couldn't do it without. And we kind of were the godparents of Asheville's Word Camp, and last year I did the keynote for, um, for this Word Camp, which was the first keynote. I speak a lot, but it was the first keynote that I had ever done. And I was really, really nervous beforehand because doing a keynote is a little different than just telling somebody how to you know, add a post or page to their WordPress site or whatever, um, regular, you know, regular, um, tutorial types of talks. So this year, uh, Lydia asked me to do this talk on how to do a promo video for your website using iPad for iMovie. And she got that idea because we just launched our new tricks website, which is my small agency, boutique agency in Atlanta. We just launched that and I did a video for the front page and I did it myself. And so she thought that, and I think I wrote about it, and she thought that would be a great idea. So that's why I named it See One, Do One, Teach One. Because I've used Camtasia and, um, um, you know, ScreenFlow and different webinar recordings and things like that, but to actually <coughs> plan and do a video for my website, this was the first time, was about a couple of months ago. So I said yes, <laughs> and then I've run into all sorts of problems because I did every, the, the slides and so forth, but I said, well, I have time to do the video of, of showing you how to do the, um, the actual editing, I have time to do that because I'll be on vacation for five days. So the people that we were staying with didn't have internet because they're in the mountains. So that was, that, I said, well, I'll just do it when we get to the bed and breakfast. Well, they had bad internet. And so I was like, oh, sorry, you know. And then so I said, well, I'll just do it when we come to, when I come to the UNC. Uh, uh, and, and they all have good internet. Well, they did, but I have to mirror. See, it's a multi-layered thing because to show you how I edited on the iPad, I had to mirror the iPad, so I needed this mirroring Reflector 2 program to mirror it on my laptop and then to record it. Well, there was some kind of thing blocking the mirroring program. So then Julian set up my own little network so I could you know, whatever, and that worked okay, but there's a, it's a little scratchy. So um, just know that, just like doing the keynote was like a lot of prep. <laughs> I'll be damned I was gonna get this done, and I did it about one o'clock, the part about editing. So, um, so that's why I named it See One, Do One, Teach One. That's what they do in medical school. They see one, do one, and teach one, if that makes you a little nervous. Um, so, and what, who better to tell you how to do it than somebody who doesn't know shh, anything, I forgot, WordPress TV, um, doesn't know anything and had to learn it, so I know how to do it the easy way. So that's what the talk's about. Um, so why use the iPad? Well, the iPad, oh, let me get my trusty iPad out. The iPad has a fantastic camera, and it's bigger than a phone, so that's really nice. Like, when I would sit there and do the video, I could put it on, on a tripod, and I'll talk about the equipment. I could sit there, put it on the tripod, and put it on selfie view, and do it myself. Now, I figured that out after my son, who works with me, um, does websites, he works at, my, at New Tricks. He was holding it for a while because the tripod hadn't come in the mail yet. Well, <laughs> he was getting, he was like, anyway, it, we were in a little snit about, you know, he wasn't holding it 
firm enough and whatever. It was so much easier after he left and I, the tripod came in the mail and I could set it up and I could do it myself and I could make sure I was framed right. I could make sure that the hair wasn't sticking up at an odd angle. And so that was wonderful. So I attached this to a tripod and sat there with the lights and did my own shooting. So the good part about that is that um, once the clips are in here, you can edit it right from there without having to move them all around, as many of you have noticed when you're trying to move stuff from one place to another. Sometimes it works really easily and sometimes it's like a real pain in the neck. So having it, most of it already there was a help. Why use iMovie for iPad? I found this out the hard way because I tr first tried to do iMovie on my desktop. And I was like, this isn't easy. And somebody said, oh, well, just do it on the iPad. It's a lot easier because it is a smaller program. They only put the parts that you really need in iMovie for iPad, and they leave all the rest of it out. Well, there wasn't anything I wanted to do that wasn't in iMovie for iPad, so that's why I did that. <coughs> Equipment, the iPad, um, and the iMovie is free. The iPad, I just got a new one because I had an old iPad, and the camera wasn't as good as my phone, and I bought the, I sprang for the new one, but it was like $4.99. So, so then iMovie is free. And then we had the tripod, a mount adapter to put the iMovie, I mean the iPad on the tripod, a microphone and some lights. So I already talked about that. iMovie comes with your Mac, um, and you can import images into it. Um, you can import audio, images, whatever, into it. But like I said, it's so much easier to um, have all your video clips still in there. Um, I have a tripod that I got from Amazon, and it cost $23. And that was great. This little adapter doodad allows the iPad to connect to it, and it's got the screws. The, the microphone, the one I got was... 20 bucks on um, Amazon, but as long as it's omnidirectional and it, I didn't even get the wireless one um, because I was going to be pretty close. So that was good. The lights, you can get lights for as low as like 50 bucks. I mean, you can make them. There's lots of places that show you how to make your own lights. Of course, you can shows you how to make anything. Um, make your own lights, but between $50 and $182 actually it goes way up. But I, this little package that has the two side lights and the, I forget what it's called, um, overhead you know, light that makes your forehead look, or head look better, that package was $182. And that has a whole bunch of lights in it so you can adjust this the, how much light shows. So with all of that, I love equipment. <laughs> it's the easiest part. Um, with all of that in place, I was ready to decide what my script would be. And so I'm, one of the things that I really wanted to do a video on my website for was to, um, was for conversion. I've been looking a lot at conversion and it really helps for somebody to have an experience of you, to make that decision to work with you. So I was wanting to do that video about that. Um, and I guess I can, let me put this here and see if I can juggle and pat my head at the same time. And I don't have, let's see. Oh, it's, uh, let's see, I can do this. Um, it's in the wrong one, but this will work. <laughs> what was that? Well, um, let's see if I'm on the right internet. And now if I do, 
new tricks. Yay, technology. Okay, so I noticed the ears. Um, so you come down here and. Hi, I'm Judy Knight, founder of New Tricks. Well, we can. We've been designing websites and helping people grow their So that was my um, 4,000th edited version, but now that I've been practicing these others, I probably, I've got one that's down to 48 seconds, it's even better. You could drive yourself crazy, it will never be perfect. That's, that's the, so you have to just say stop at some point. I'm gonna go back to my slides. So that's where I started, so I needed to, um, I needed to come up with what I was going to, um, to talk about. I'm going to skip ahead from, pro let's see, where am I? Writing the script. Um, so what, what's really important is that you know what the purpose of your video is. And that if it's a promo video, you really want to speak to your client's pain points, you know, your target market. We chose to really speak to people that already had a website because they hopefully already have some money because they've been in business for a while. So they already have a website, but they're really tired of it and it's not working for them. And so that's like our best sweet spot of a small to medium sized business that can't stand their website anymore and really wants not just a pretty website but a website that works to bring in leads, customers, business. So um, you need to know those things in order to, you need to know who you're talking to and what your message is in order to write your um, video. So you also need to know what your, brand is, what your style is. Um, I have this little thing, let's see. This is Jason Swank, anybody know him? He's in Atlanta and he's got a video with a cat. Now I just listened to Tim Ferriss talk to uh, somebody who he did this research on dating sites on which images of men do women like the best, and they were all wrong. It turns out it wasn't, you know, the muscles or the, even the smiles. It was a guy with a cat. So, <laughs> I don't know if Jason knew this when he did this. I'm gonna... <laughs> the cat wasn't happy. So anyway, you can see Jason's video later, but you can see you can play around with it. You can have some fun with it. I mean, you know, Jason doesn't put makeup on. <laughs> he hardly shaves. Um, you know, he's got the cat. That makes up for a lot of things. Um, so, but you have to figure out how you're going to do it. Are you kind of... I mean, our website has a lot of the dog stuff on it and whatever, and I thought that I needed to balance it out with a little bit more seriousness um, since we already did the, you know, kitschy thing. And I could have had the dogs, we have three basset hounds, but I didn't do that. Um, so you want to build no like and trust. So you have to spend some time figuring out 
what can you do in that video that's going to give them a little bit of sense of who you are, a little peek into who you and your company is. Um, so writing the script, when I first did the script, it was three minutes, and I taped myself, and oh, I was bored. I mean, I couldn't even stand to listen to it. So that was, I knew that was way too long. So I started weeding it down and got it down to about hmm, all little shy of two minutes. And I went and talked to a friend of mine who does these, Mike Stewart. He's like, was coaching me through it a little bit. And he made me whittle it down to a minute. And I thought, but I can't, oh, but what about, you know, every little line was precious. Well, it actually wasn't because if somebody zones out and doesn't, finish watching it anyway because it's boring them as much as it was boring you, they'll never listen to it anyway. So short is good. Um, it's kind of like the headlines, people only reading the headlines on the web. So what to include? So you, in some sort of order, you need to introduce yourself and your business. You need to call out a major pain point of the target user. You need to explain how your company can provide nirvana for them and have a call to action that tells them what next to do. Oh, you know, I'm in the, that's not the best view. Um, so uh, scripting the shots. Don't try to memorize it all. This is another thing I was doing wrong. I was memorizing the whole thing. And then it would be like, you could see, I'd be like, what was next? And, no, he said, chunk it up and then do like an every other section with B-roll. So don't try to do yourself sitting there the whole time. Add some B-roll behind it, which then splits up the sections. So then you can record a section that's like a sentence or two. And hopefully you've got at least that much memory to do that without having to be searching for your words or looking at trying to look at a teleprompter. You can always tell unless somebody's very expert. So if you chunk it up and, and figure out on the sections, the set, like when you're introducing yourself, you want to be looking at the camera. That's the part like you want to be there. You don't want to have B-roll. But the interspersed part like, oh, and Judy Knight of New Tricks and I could show my logo. And then that also provides a transition so that if I just did a bunch of little snippets of me online, it would be hard to stitch them all together, edit them all together. So, so you need to make your script and start thinking about how you can demonstrate what kind of images you have that can demonstrate the, the B-roll portion of your story. So you can use, there's lots of, if you, if you look at, if you Google um, storyboards, there's lots of images that you can get and you can download a lot of PDFs and people who have done storyboard, um, written out storyboard thing, but it, it also works really well to do it on, on a, PowerPoint or Keynote. So I made a shortened version for what I'm going to show you today where there's clip one is Judy on camera in front of a wood wall with a plant and then it says, hi, I'm Judy Knight. Clip two is end of the introduction where I say founder of New Tricks and I'm inserting an image of the New Tricks logo. Step three is me with the plant on camera again, and this is what I'm going to say. Step four, I'm going to address the pain points with a voiceover and insert some, a slide that I created saying the exact same thing I'm saying. I just made a PowerPoint slide with my logo and those words. We believe that the end result of a web design should be blah, blah, blah. And then a call to action. If you'd like to find out how you can have your website get the results you want. So that's my shortened version, which actually, like I said, think it works better than what I have already. Um, so you get that all together. Then you find a location. You know, I'm sure you've seen people online who, 
who have the worst backgrounds for their, you know, it's like their messy house or, or some ugly corner look like a, you know, they're in a cell block, something, you know, pay attention to that, people. Actually look at what's in the background. Um, set up your tripod with your iPad attached, set up your lights, check your set with the iPad to see if the background and lighting are right, clip on your microphone and test the whole thing. Um, oh, do the, the iPad horizontally and the interesting thing is when you do iMovie and you set it up, you, when you're looking at selfie view, when you see yourself, you can put your finger on yourself and a little box on your nose and a box will show up and if you press on it, it will focus it. So do that and then press record, sit back and do your clip, then stop the recording. So, and then test it, make sure that you didn't do 15 of those segments without turning your volume on. And I did it so well. So, um, so, you know, test one before you do every single piece of it. Um, have your script nearby so that you can, again, you might want to print it out big and tape it up, but so that you can look at it, hold it in your memory, and then shoot it without having the teleprompter or actually looking at it. Oh, this is a big one. Smiling. Gosh. I don't smile enough. I didn't really know that, but I'm not a smiler. And um, my friend Mike said to, before each section, to smile and let it, let it smile enough so that I have something at the, you know, so that you have enough to clip and to hook the things together without having these odd faces. And boy, when you're editing, you see some really strange faces. So smile at each before and after each section. Oh, that was the part about the little, little um, uh, yellow box. Look into the camera, say your lines. Okay. Go through each section. You can go ahead, how I did the voiceover ones, you can do it two ways. You can, the way I did it was I actually just read it on the parts that I knew I wasn't going to be on camera. I just sat there and did the same thing, but I read it. I didn't bother smiling or looking into the camera. And that made it pretty easy for me. You can also just drop your B-roll image in and record later, do a voiceover recording, but I thought that was harder. So it's easier to detach the audio from the video and just move it over and put it under your photo, then to fool with the voiceover later. Then your voice is consistent all along too. Yeah, and so, you know, after you do it, make sure that everything's right, then finish shooting all of your clips, and then you're, you're good to go. I mean, for that round, until you go look at it really and you hate it and you <laughs> do it four more times. So that is how you, um, how that happens. Let's see. Get rid of him. And so now this is, um, let's go over here. I'm recording the, this for, the, for um, them to edit the video. Um, so this is the little movie that I did. Let's see, this is the... Okay, can, we can't really hear... The, where is it coming out? My okay, whoa, but it, back it up, back it up, um, Judy. We can start the okay. 
Oh, and when you're watching this, some of the words aren't going to be matching, but they are in real life, but they're not because of the way I had to deal with the internet here. But I'll show you how it actually sounds in a, later. Right there. the words are out of sync. I'm dragging with my finger. 
like, this is what it was to start with. And then I made it longer. And I don't know exactly how long I'm going to need it, but and how it starts moving, you see how <coughs> it moves? Well, if I selected it. Ken Burns effect. So you see how I'm pinching. I'm taking my two fingers and I'm pinching and I'm putting it down here. If I wanted it to start down here, um, I could pinch it and start it down there and then I could say I wanted it to move up here or I could move it around. So just pinch to position to start and pinch to position the end. And I have it how I want it, so I'm not going to pinch anything. And I'm just, oh, and what I'm doing now is just scrolling through with my finger through our whole video.